Well, good morning, good afternoon, happy Tuesday, happy to be here. Ron, I appreciate you inviting us to share viewpoints about what's uh, happening out there in HPC world, uh, especially in um, energy industry. So to introduce myself, I'm Manish, as uh, um, work for Microsoft yeah, HP plus AI Global Black Belt Team. I live in Dallas, Texas. And as a part of this team, uh, we closely work with our customers in Americas. Um, oil and gas customers, power utilities, mining verticals, um, made a focus on high performance computing space to kind of bring them up to speed with uh, what we are doing with other customers and plan and build their HPC uh, AI based solutions aligning to their you know, technical strategy or engineering research initiatives or any business initiative that matters most for them. So we are, we are celebrating today, uh, this year, uh, tremendous growth and success in uh, HP space, HPC space across our uh, energy customers. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, and I think today we are in exciting times, probably because uh, for the first time after a long time, 2021, 2022, um, cloud is being seen as an essential critical resource to run HPC jobs. So we see the cloud usage uh, in HPC space growing outstandingly. Um, you know, obviously HPC, uh, Azure HPC is growing, growing uh, um, gangbusters and we are happy more and more customers are finally appreciating that Microsoft offers the uh, best HPC Echo system today. Um, for today's session, I'll make it quick and short um, a few points I want to highlight uh, what we are seeing out there. As a reminder, um, if you are interested in a technical deep dive in Azure platform for energy, Aaron, my colleague, uh, he's going to present the part two of this session and we'll love to handle Q&A towards the end of the series. So let's get started here. Um, like to if I would like you to take away anything from this session, 20 minute session, it would be for listeners who are new to HPC. What is HPC? Where does it help? And why HPC matters in energy space? For folks on this call, um, if you have experience in HPC on-prem, uh, you have, you know, dip your toe in the water in cloud or experienced cloud users in uh, using um, you know, HPC workloads. I would like, uh, probably like to touch on some key noticeable HPC trends. And finally, touch on some uh, energy HPC use cases commonly seen and, and more importantly, try to attempt to highlight how Microsoft Azure platform is, is purpose-built for such a high performance computing uh, needs, especially in, in, in the in energy works, in an energy space. Okay, so let's start with HPC. HPC is a technology that harnesses the big compute cluster uh, to solve complex problems. Um, you know, requires massive computation. You see on the left-hand side, um, you know, mention of thousands of cores to, you know, do a single simulation. The, um, you know, we're solving some large problems here. And on the right hand side, the characteristics of such jobs, such workloads, such workflows, if I can define it in, in a few words, um, the work can be split into different discrete tasks, which can run across multiple cores simultaneously. And the jobs are not essentially 24 by seven, but they do have to have, you know, node failure and application crashes. So they should be able to gracefully handle that. And one other point about these workloads, um, they, depending on the workloads, you might use a compute or memory intensive, um, you know, horsepower behind it. Um, some of these workloads, they are tightly coupled and others, they have tasks that can run independently and in parallel, right? So when, when I talk about tightly coupled, we're talking about the jobs must interact and exchange intermediate results. And in that case, you're gonna need like a high speed uh, networking technology such as infinite band or 
RDMA, that's called R Remote Direct Memory Access, to make sure that you have uh, a fast inter-node uh, task message communication for, for low latencies and all that stuff. So hopefully kind of this kind of tells you what is HPC and where, how it's being used. In industry, in, in energy industry, oil and gas specific, and probably across other verticals for sure, simulations, modeling, rendering, and visualizations, I would say they're commonly used patterns. HPC usage scenarios. Ideally, these are simulations, they have intense computation requirements, or often they have high volumes of small tasks or memory intensive. And, and, and in long running. So like in energy, uh, we have seismic uh, interpret image interpretation, uh, seismic processing. So the challenge there is the data sets from these seismic surveys, they're so large, so complex that they defy the management with any of these traditional relation, uh, relational databases and softwares from what we have seen in the past. And this is where HPC comes to play aims to bear in energy industry. So let's turn my attention to users who have actually been in the past on using it on-prem. And, and we have seen a lot of energy customers, they have existing HPC on-prem data centers. So there's a fundamental problem for all such organizations. And, and here is some of the top of mind concerns we hear from HPC, like data center research engineer, researchers, engineers, on-prem owners, IT leaders. Um, what's happening in, in energy industry, in specific oil and gas, power utilities, mining verticals, business and technology models are changing so rapidly with the emergence of edge, IoT, AI, ML, that some of these use cases and more use of HPC workloads as they modernize, um, the HPC on-prem compute infrastructure just can't keep up. So it's kind of putting some pressure on them, um, putting a pressure on them uh, in terms of, you know, looking at different options. So, you know, how can I, there's a talk about how can I cut down on cost per simulation, cost per visualization. Um, you know, if you see on the left hand side, AI ML workloads, you know, we talk about edge, we talk about digital twins, use case interested in HPC, which is in my mind is unleashing a new era of compute workload demand, sometimes not available on-prem. Uh, we also confronted with like customers, which have a combination of uh, ever growing demand on more uh, and faster compute resources because the, this is all driven by the fact that they are, they are ever growing characteristics of these simulations. So all in all, if you read through the slide, there's, there's these other concerns, the challenges that, you know, our current on-prem HPC, um, you know, um, data center owners, researchers, um, and, and community is feeling. Um, I guess the questionnaire is how can they get their hands with the latest GPUs, CPUs, you know, faster than their on-prem cycles allow, and, and, and maybe with the right balance of uh, performance, uh, price, uh, and availability. So um, interesting trend that came uh, around uh, just a couple of months back, according to a market survey here by Hyperion, they did it across um, multiple HPC sites they are finding a huge shift of funding and spending in favor of cloud, often dipping into on-prem budgets. And as per their survey, I, I believe more than 50% HP, HP, HPC sites, they responded uh, gradually moving their on-prem budgets to cloud, meaning they will either stop buying on-prem or they'll buy less on-prem resources and use that extra money in the cloud or perhaps even delay their on-prem purchases and use the money in the cloud. Um, you know, chart over here basically talks about HPC spending, on-prem cloud and AI, nearly 35 billion 
and is in track to reach 40 billion in 2022, 50 billion by 2026, according to Hyperion. So, you know, overall, um, in 2021, we did very well. Um, some of the data points that I, I'm observing, as I mentioned earlier, cloud is starting to being seen as a critical resource to run workloads, as opposed to in the past, just an additional workload on top of on-prem. Um, we are seeing customers move away from the burst and overflow experiments, um, perhaps more going in production and, and moving towards containers and in and, and modernization. So more of a cloud native approach as well. Um, they're taking chunk of their you know, on-prem, as I mentioned to you, dipping into their budgets and, you know, with every year they're trying to buy more, more and more of the, um, you know, uh, the cloud flavor uh, IAS uh, pass offerings. Uh, we also have much clearer, clearer definition across ISVs, across uh, applications that are used in the HPC world, uh, which ones are cloud friendly, which ones are, you know, on-prem friendly. Um, most of these applications have been there for, you know, decades. Um, so the, yeah, there's, there's definitely a better better clarification and clear you know uh, definition of, of uh, on-prem versus uh, uh, cloud-friendly workloads. Um, ISVs are coming fast with their crowd-friendly approaches, whether it's SaaS model or HPC as a service model, and 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 almost every single time I tend to hear that there is HPC talent scarcity, and that still remains. Um, on energy side, definitely there's uh, meaningful, um, in this, a, a meaningful pressure to seek sustainability initiatives across the industry. So these are some of the other data points that I think of, of, of my interest. But bottom line, HPC market in energy industry definitely continues to have impressive growth, much steeper than expected in, in 2021. And, and 2022 and beyond is only going to show us better results from um, how customers are being more successful in, in cloud. So let me turn my attention here quickly to talking about what we are seeing out there in um, the key digital hotspots in oil and gas. Um, so a lot of the large energy companies um, um, you can visit our site, Chevron, BP, Schlumberger, Halliburton. Um, we are employing Microsoft Azure high performance computing in a variety of ways. So this, this shows you kind of like the digital hot spots where HPC big compute workloads are being utilized both upstream as well as downstream value chain. Um, you know, as you know, oil and industry gas can be broken into upstream, midstream and downstream. The upstream involves you know, search of uh, those underwater and underground natural fields or crude fields or, you know, drilling of exploration wells or maybe drilling into established wells to recover oils and gas and downstream, obviously, is filtering of gas and marketing and, and commercial distribution in different forms. Um, we do see a um, couple of key use cases that I want to highlight seismic processing. Seismic processing imaging is kind of like the fundamental of uh, for oil, oil and gas business as it creates like the model of subsurface out of the exploration data and the quality of the subsurface, subsurface model and the quality and the resolution of the data is crucial to make the right decisions, business decisions regarding bidding on lease or deciding to drill. Um, so these, these seismic interpretations running on HPC uh, you can kind of improve the positioning of wells by, by visualizing uh, and also reduce the risk of drilling a dry hole. Most of these workloads that you see um, that are getting a better understanding of the surf, surf, subsurface uh, structure, they translate into reducing like exploration risks. Um, from, a, from a technology standpoint, these jobs are very data intensive, computer intensive. Needs, needs to process terabytes of petabytes of data and requires fast uh, and, and reliable, massive computation power. Uh, and that's why we need HPC parallel computing to process the data, to reduce the time, compilation, as well as completion. Another great example is reservoir modeling, which is also 
an area of reservoir engineering where you combine physics, math, computer programming to a reservoir model. And that kind of allows you to do analysis and prediction of fluid behavior uh, in the reservoir over time. And that acquires high computation power and typically, you know, categorizes a, you know, pretty commonly known uh, big compute to a workload characteristic. Um, mining, similarly mining offers a, uh, digital spots for HPC use cases where Azure HPC is being used. Um, all the way from mine exploration and development, you'll see like, you know, or body simulation or simulating a mine plan, uh, simulation of mine blasting in a 3D format. Um, in mine extraction, you would see things like froth floating and heap leaching. Um, and I, I can tell you, I can spend more time on each one of these time deserving, right? Um, but the Good ones that I've seen lately, and I think has come to our attention, has a more and more um, pervasive use is is the ones in in mine production, with a huge focus on mine safety and a, and and uh, uh, AI applications, where they use image processing for people identification and recognition in no go places in the mine, um, you know, hazard detection. And also for services, it's predictive maintenance and pit to port optimization. So um, there's quite a lot of use cases in mind as well. Um, the next one I, I, I would like to highlight and it's besides oil and gas and, and you know, mining is obviously power and utilities. We are seeing grid simulation forecasting, asset performance and uh, as, asset performance monitoring and predictive maintenance and also weather forecasting. Uh, sustainability is, is is a huge thing. So we're seeing uh, wind turbines, solar manufacturing, uh, solar panel manufacturing, and design optimization. Um, you know, renewable energies, obviously, um, solar predictive maintenance, um, as well as um, um, you know, ca carbon capture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the list goes on. We could spend the entire hour talking about how this gives, but hopefully, this gives you, you know. Um, an idea that there's no shortage of big compute workloads in 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 energy as well as uh, and you know oil gas mining as well as uh, power utilities space. Uh, one other thing I would like to highlight here, given that we talked about the trends, we talked about you know so many use cases within the industry industry space. Um, most of these use cases I mentioned with big compute characteristics, they cannot be supported by general compute or vanilla compute IS offerings. What you really need is a purpose-built HPC platform, which offers you like specialized compute, you know, fleet of uh, HPC SKUs, um, cores, um, uh, GPUs, high performance storage, um, fast networking architecture with low latency, um, so I'll try to attempt to, uh, you know, talking about this, uh, some pieces, um, Aaron is gonna expand a little bit more about that, but I wanted to kind of quickly touch on how these things are purpose-built for HPC use cases in energy. So there's a range of things that might happen in energy space while well, it comes to HPC. There are single node jobs, they require, you know, let's say a compute optimized F-series virtual machine, um, and they're tightly coupled jobs that I mentioned to you, many nodes running, uh, they might run on, you know, H-series virtual machine, uh, all the way up to, you know, dedicated uh, Cray computers for um, memory intensive seismic and reservoir simulation. You know, H Azure HPC offers uh, HB series. Um, HB series uh, a is for high bandwidth. And these are uh, VMs that would uh, run multiple times faster than an on-premise HPC hardware. Um, you also use HB and HC high compute for memory bandwidth bound and compute bound reservoir simulation. Uh, obviously, we use NV VMs for 3D reservoir modeling and visualizations, visualizing the seismic data. So yes, these are purpose built for such workloads. And obviously, you need a high performance storage, uh, which offers uh, which offers not just uh, you to be able to mimic the protocols on premise, but also offers you to easily mount in persistent storage from your cluster in form of blobs or disks or hybrid or data lake storage. Um, things like 
seismic data processing, which might require a crate cluster. And that's more of a luster based bare metal, fully managed HPC storage solution, which is multiple times more throughput than traditional luster storage options that you have seen in the past. And obviously the infinite infinite band support, which which uh, which is needed for MPI jobs, um, you know, and molecular dynamics, uh, computational fluid dynamics, uh, oil and gas reservoir simulation, and so many emerging distributed machine learning workloads and energy. Um, these are the jobs that would require message passing, internode communication at an extremely low latency. So all in all. Um, HPC um, needs a true HPC um, platform capability um, and also an end-to-end -end experience to manage these workloads and the lifecycle management automation um, such, that, such that Azure offers at this point. You know, Azure HPC is built for supporting these needs in specifics and, uh, and that this is why it's a huge differentiator as well as a self-evident choice uh, of platform to run these workloads, um, um, specifically in energy, uh, energy section. So let me um, quickly turn over to um, one more item that I would like to discuss before um, I, I go towards the, um, you know, some of the case studies and, and win stories that I would like to bring to your attention. Um, Azure, in addition to the various platform components, what, how, I'd like to talk to you about how we are um, using HPC resources uh, within the cloud, following the same model, IS deployment models, you know, on-premise um, or whether it's hybrid or SaaS. Um, in energy, you would see geoscientists and engineers, they are submitting, they're submitting their jobs uh, manually to the clouds. Maybe that's one way to do that. They get the results back on-prem and they do the visualizations. They could be burst jobs. We see a lot of the users submitting jobs in the clouds uh, with a scheduler. Um, this is like, you know, when they are, uh, the applications on-prem have, have uh, compute that is probably going older or they might not have enough capacity. Uh, they'll set up another scheduler inside the cloud and they'll submit the job inside the cloud, returns back the results. A great example is an ISV vendor in oil and gas industry. They use Azure Batch to enable its code to, to run in, in the cloud as software as a service. And what it does, it, it's the offering contains like um, containers, it uses containers actually to have an identical environment of uh, in Azure and on-premise. So the standard application workflow is implemented through web hooks, which re returns, uh, which runs all the models and uploads data to, data to the cloud. And that kind of, you know, allows the vendor to make the software available to the cloud to the customers in a more scalable way in the cloud without having to run their you know on on premise uh, infrastructure need um, so um, i mean that's another way of bursting is another one you have geoscientists that are submitting jobs uh, in parallel fashion so that you do submit jobs on prem as well as uh, you know uh, submitting jobs in the cloud so that's more of a hybrid mode um, as you start going into uh, you know a, a true hybrid mode, you're you're trying to cache some of the data uh, from on-premise to the cloud to run the simulation, and then obviously you have on the right hand side you have finally the cloud native HPC mode uh, model, which uh, which replaces you know um, the the intelligence with functions. It introduces AI components to run workloads, and you're seeing more of more use of AKS containers for for. Um, you know, hosting and running HPC workloads. So in the next session, um, Aaron will uh, introduce you more specifics on these uh, patterns that we are seeing for on-prem, semi-hybrid, hybrid, you know, cloud native approaches, which we see all over across the board in, in energy space. All right, so with that, I'm going to take a quick peek at some of the customer stories. We'd love to time spend. We'd love to uh, spend time on on a um, bunch of them, but I would like to focus on at least one of them. Um, you know, Shilamberge is running high resolution reservoir simulator for large and complex engineering models locally and on prem on the cloud using uh, HPC. Um, Repsol, um, they are running reservoir modeling simulation on Azure for better insight into making 
uh, decisions for a geoscientist. We have others like uh, renewable energy um, company who has moved like 100% of their HPC processing workflows to, to Azure, resulting in more elastic, uh, effective, you know, environment friendly kind of uh, usage model. And, and the one I like to kind of stress a more, uh, you know, coverage upon is, is Vestas. So Vestas is a global leader in sustainable energy solution. And they wanted to optimize wind energy production by kind of reducing the negative impact of wind of turbine wakes. Um, so they ran some kind of a reinforcement learning engine using machine language and, and, and Microsoft Azure high performance computing and storage resources. So we're seeing so many similar use cases in sustainability world, um, West us in this case, they were able to address the wind farm uh, mitigation wake effect with Azure kind of generating more uh, wind energy and, and kind of building a sustainable and prosperous uh, uh, energy future. Similar stories on HPC, high, high performance computing, which is allowing business and energy to scale computationally, to build deep uh, learning algorithms that can take advantage of high volumes of data. Um, you know, with high volumes of data that comes large amount of computing needs with greater performance specs. And this is where I feel like we are leading to a convergence between HPC and AI. Um, and especially in energy, um, AI systems today are designed, IoT systems, edge systems are gathering and injecting and processing so much data that it needs to run in a highly optimized hardware, which has maybe in some cases capacity to perform uh, trillions of calculations per, per second or more. So we're seeing more and more of these customers embrace Azure as, as, as they realize that Azure HPC platform enables all ends uh, with comprehensive features and products on IoT, Edge, you know, for data scientists, for ML teams. Now these data scientists, ML teams, they have they have done their job over the last few years. Um, they are enabling their models at scale at low, low latencies, perhaps using high performance computing, uh, whether, it's, whether it's ML, whether it's ML ops, whether it's Azure ML, whether it's cognitive services, edge services in Azure, um, or even other open source frameworks, um, ISV applications. Today, I feel most of the customers um, their data, data science ML teams, they want to take their models to bear, enable their models at scale, especially when it's time for showtime. And, you know, they're moving from experimentation to, you know, on-prem to, to, to cloud, kind of leveraging the, the economies of, of, of scale. So um, lastly, but not the least, as we see, um, you know, in oil and gas, just to summarize, we are seeing aggressive sustainability goals that are, you know, driving decarbonization initiatives within the organization. So you are seeing renewable assets, as I talked to you about offshore wind turbine, EV, EV charging stations. I mean, these use cases continue to grow. Power and utilities, you will see, um, you know, we had a big failure of uh, uh, aging physical transmission two years back in Texas. Uh, you're seeing a lot of modernization. You're seeing a lot of uh, solar rooftop feeding back uh, power to the grid. And these are the new emerging market and business models that will require big compute work, uh, workloads to scale up uh, as kind of the demand increases. And then similarly, as I mentioned to you in mining, just to kind of summarize, one of the things that comes, um, comes to my mind that I was reading about is, is especially um, the AI aspects of, of, of AI convergence on HPC, uh, especially in use cases where uh, mining operators are, are, are thinking about feature of uh, the workers and then how they run their operation in, 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 in the mines more, more, you know, more safely. So that's really, I think, one of the things uh, that is re um, reverberating across uh, our energy uh, energy space. And today, I think with with this session, I would like to um, kind of summarize. Um, we have help available um, from our practice, um, you know, with a combination of um, 
the expertise available in Microsoft with the marketplace of HPC apps, a strong list of ISV apps um, uh, supported on, on Azure, um, qualified list of partners. We feel uh, Azure is uh, the only public provi cloud provider offering um, their full range of HPC capabilities. And I, if there's one thing I would like you to take away, it would be that Microsoft uh, Azure is self-evident choice of HPC plus AI platform. And we continue to see dominant strength in energy, um, oil and gas, mining, power utilities, um, space. Um, anything um, that we have to offer, if you need any specific help, any, um, you know, whether it's regarding any engineering problems or business technical issues, benchmarking, um, where, or simply HPC business case, uh, case in point, TCO justification or business value justifications, we are here to help. We'll be happy to sit down with you anytime convenient for you. And I hope this session is informative and I thank you for your time. Um, I will definitely pass this over to um, our next session, my colleague uh, Aaron, who will present in deep dive technical details, um, some talks that um, are, are making a, a, a lot of sense in our energy space. Uh, we'll also leave you some links and some information so you can follow up with me or Aaron. I really appreciate your time today. And thank you, Ron, for arranging this.